This morning at about noon, HMS Warspite, accompanied by a strong force of destroyers, advanced up the Narvik Fjord and shattered four out of the seven German destroyers which were sheltering in the bay. In the Indian Ocean, HMS Leander, a cruiser of the New Zealand squadron, has caught a fast Italian merchant ship acting as a commerce raider. The fleet air arm has struck at Taranto. Air reconnaissance shows that one Italian battleship is badly down by the bows and two others are aground. We overtook one of the convoys which carry the munitions and supplies of the new world to sustain the champions of freedom in the old. The whole horizon, whole broad horizon, seemed filled with ships. These widespread operations are examples of the way in which the Navy is organized to be in the right place at the right time to counter every enemy move to attack him and defeat him in every ocean. This organization has grown up from the grouping of ships at strategic points to protect our trade routes. These bases are the centers of all naval activity. Fleets may have their headquarters there, or units with roving commissions may use them for refueling and re-equipping. But whatever the duty or the station, ships and bases all are part of one vast naval web whose centre is at the Admiralty in London. It is from the Admiralty that the strategic movements of fleets are controlled. For example, plans had to be put into operation to intercept the Bismarck when aircraft reported that this Nazi battleship had left Bergen. There were three ways she could reach the Atlantic. The Navy prepared for each of these possibilities by the dispatch of ships and by naval and aircraft patrols. So when the Bismarck was sighted off Iceland, the commander-in-chief of the home fleet brought in his forces one after another. First, the nearest units attacked the Nazi ship. Then when she was lost, aircraft searched for her. And finally, when she was found again and disabled by destroyers and aircraft, the battleships came in and finished the job. The sinking of the Bismarck depended on two things. Strategy, that is, the grouping of naval and air units before battle, and tactics, the maneuvering of units in battle. We have seen how strategy helped to sink the Bismarck. Let us see what we mean by tactics. Naval warfare no longer takes place only on the surface of the sea, but underwater and in the air. so that a modern fleet is made up of many different types of ships. The backbone of the Navy has always been the battleship. The modern battleship is armed with heavy guns which can fire more than 15 miles. It is protected by immensely strong steel armor. A battleship can give and take more punishment than any other ship afloat. Cruisers are smaller. They have less armor and less powerful guns than battleships. Because of their speed, cruisers make effective commerce raiders. They have recently been very active in the Mediterranean, where they have crippled and destroyed enemy convoys. But there are many other jobs for which cruisers are well suited. For example, the Bismarck was first sighted and shadowed off Iceland by a cruiser force consisting of the Norfolk and Suffolk. They held on after the Bismarck had sunk the hood, and so were able to report the Bismarck's movements. But the cruiser can on occasion play a decisive role without the support of battleships. For example, three cruisers attacked the Graf Spee at the mouth of the River Plate. The Graf Spee was a pocket battleship, which means that although her guns were nearly as large as those of a battleship, her armor was not much stronger than that of a cruiser. So our three cruisers, the Exeter, Ajax and Achilles, with their combined gunfire, could hope to attack the Graf Spee on something approaching equal terms. Our cruiser force engaged the enemy. The Exeter parted company from Ajax and Achilles, dividing the British force in two. This made the Graf Spee divide her armament, which lessened its effectiveness. Caught in the fire from our cruisers, the Nazi pocket battleship was badly damaged and made off for a neutral coast, where she scuttled herself rather than face a renewal of the engagement. 
But in the Matapan action in the Mediterranean, our battleships were in the offing, and cruisers played the part of decoys. Air reconnaissance showed the Italian forces to be a battleship, and some miles away, six cruisers. Our cruisers made contact with the Italian light force and decoyed them towards our battle fleet. When the Italians turned, we shadowed them. But sighting the Italian battleship, our cruisers turned out of gun range and again tried to decoy the Italians towards our battle fleet and that hornet's nest, the aircraft carrier. Flights of torpedo-carrying aircraft were launched to attack the Italian fleet. These torpedo attacks damaged the enemy ships and slowed them down. This gave our battle fleet the chance to catch up and to get within range at nightfall when we sank at least three heavy cruisers and two destroyers without the loss of any one of our ships. The aircraft carrier is the great new naval weapon. She is as fast as a cruiser but only carries small guns for defense. Her offensive power lies in her torpedo bombers and her fighter aircraft. Aircraft carriers played an important part in the Bismarck chase. A new ship, the Victorious, launched an aircraft attack with torpedoes here. And later, the Ark Royal attacked with aircraft here and here. These attacks damaged the Bismarck and finally slowed her down enough for our heavy ships to get within range. But aircraft carriers have other uses. When the Bismarck was lost in mist, aircraft from the Victorious and Ark Royal searched hundreds of miles of the Atlantic Ocean. They shared this duty with aircraft from Coastal Command and the Royal Canadian Air Force, which operated from both shores of the Atlantic. The Bismarck was found and sunk as a result of this combined search. Air patrol goes on day and night. It protects our vital sea routes and is a new and successful way of fighting submarines. Ships also fight under watercraft. Destroyers, the greyhounds of the sea, are a menace to submarines because of their great speed and maneuverability. Destroyers and other small ships, such as corvettes, are vital in protecting our convoys and in keeping our sea lanes open. But destroyers themselves carry out many other duties. They screen the battle fleet from submarines. They attack the enemy battle fleet with torpedoes. They beat off the attacks of enemy destroyers. Destroyers are in fact the maids of all work of the Navy. A modern Navy is made up of 101 different craft. All naval success depends on these units working together as one team. From the five-ton reconnaissance plane, to the 35,000 ton battleship. These are some of the tools with which we shall finish the job. The Navy is a mighty weapon in the hands of the men who plan the strategy and of the men who carry out the task of seeking out and destroying the enemy wherever he may be found. <laughs>